Hello and welcome to episode 102 of Ready to Mosh. I'm Kev P and alongside me is the rip-off to my tool, it's Gem G. I didn't get that. The ticket price is for tool. Oh yeah. Absolutely obscene. Disgusting. Yeah. Half a festival ticket price. Pretty much. So I'm I'm not going to that. No, definitely not. But <laughs> yeah. I won't have a rant now about that. We'll save that for another episode. Yeah. Because we've got better things to talk about. Better in things this to talk about in this one. <laughs> And in this one, we had a chat with Dan from Must Kill, who we saw at Dolby Alt Fest, and we were really impressed with. Yeah, they played a great set on the Saturday afternoon, and it was great to have a chat with him about that and lots of other things as well. So we've got a guest on the podcast today. We've got Dan from Must Kill. How are you doing, Dan? Hi, I'm really great. Thank, thank you very much for having me. Okay, so let's start at the beginning then. Uh, if you can just tell us a bit about how the band began. Oh yeah, so we officially formed in 2018, but the band was in the works for a couple of years before that. So um, yeah, just as the band formed, so it's a bit of a funny history. So basically, the who is now ex drummer James Bell, who was the original drummer with the band, um, but has now left as we've just announced that we have a new drummer. So me and him used to play in a band like 10 years ago, and we had some like small successes with that and kind of everyone went off and did their own thing and then for you know a few years later i had the idea that i wanted to start a new band and basically i asked him if he would help me start it up and also the bass player of that band he's a who is the current lead guitar player amazing guitar player we'd been speaking about it for years and um yeah we decided okay let's actually do it so we officially formed in 2018 uh, and that was with our original bassist John Otter, and yeah, we released an EP in twenty twenty. And sorry, I've got lost on the the question, so I've I've just gone off on one, haven't I? So it's quite all right. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Um, so yeah, we officially started in twenty eighteen. I already had like a bunch of songs written, so we were practicing together, and then we decided to go in the studio. It was around twenty end of 2019 and then yeah we released our first ep ghost malevolent in march 2020 and then that's when the pandemic hit so then i kind of just threw a spanner into the works and just put everything on pause basically and the band name must kill where did it come from yeah good question uh so it basically came from a cavalera conspiracy song they have a song called must kill i am a huge matt's cavalera fan like basically uh, beneath the uh, beneath the remains album by Sepultura, that kind of changed my life and my perspective of like what I love about metal. Like I was into kind of like what you get into in the beginning. Like I got into like System of a Down, Slipknot, those kind of bands, and then I kind of got into Metallica and Megadeth. But then Sepultura, when I put that CD on in my Walkman, it kind of just wow, it just blew me away. And uh, I've been like an avid Matt's Cavalera fan like ever since. And um, yeah, I just love all of the stuff that he's been a part of, you know, all the projects he has. So when I first heard their first album, uh, the Cavalier, Cavalier Conspiracy album, I remember Must Kill, I thought, oh, that would be a really cool band name. And that's that's basically where it came from. Okay, so aside from Sepultura and Max, then, who would you say are your main influences? Well, my main influences. So um, I would say Dave Mustaine from Megadeth. Um, I'm a huge Megadeth fan. Um also, I would say uh, Chuck Schuldner from Death. Also, uh, Jeff Waters, I'm a huge Annihilator fan. Gary Holt and Eric Peterson, just like riffs, riffs for days, you know, just absolutely unbelievable. And also, I'd say, because there's a lot of like kind of old, old school guys that I've just named there, but, you know, probably like a new school kind of influence, I would say, is uh, Dave Davidson from Revocation, like a I'm a huge Revocation fan. I think what they're doing is is just um, very, I don't know, it's just off the charts, like what they're doing in terms of like, you know, death metal and thrash. And they're, they're kind of more death now, but yeah, they've always incorporated like thrash and death together with all this kind of jazzy stuff as well. So yeah, I'd say those are my main influences really. And what's the songwriting process for you guys? So it's it's kind of changed. It's changed and evolved a bit over since we started. So when... The band was first formed i already had basically the four songs on the ep um basically basically written but what would what would happen is I, what happened was i took those kind of four songs to the guys and we kind of refined 
refined them and like the guys gave their inputs and then we kind of just made them what they were so i can't take all the credit for like writing all of those songs on the first ep but um the ideas like mainly came from me in the beginning and then on the latest ep which we released so what what the process is now is whoever comes up with a song idea the guitarist and i will meet up and we'll kind of we'll tab it out we'll start recording the pre-production like demo because you know tabbing it on paper and then how it actually sounds in the real world are very two different things. So, and also hearing it in a practice room as well. So the guitarist and I will kind of get together, write the demo. So if I've got like a, the majority of the song in my in my head, we'll work on it together and then we'll just kind of tweak it and then bring it to the band and vice versa. So yeah, it's it's kind of like more of a collaboration now than, than it was in the beginning. And, you know, we don't, I personally, and the re- I can speak for the rest of the guys, we don't want it to be, I write all the songs and this is what it is. Like, there are there are certain parts where some of the guys will go, no, I, it has to be like this. Like, it can't be like that. You know, everyone has, has the chance to voice their opinions and everything. And it we all do it in a pretty respectful way as well, if you can believe it. So it's because <laughs> it can get heated sometimes if you're, if you're passionate about, you know, certain things being in the songs. But yeah, it's definitely um, more of a collaboration now. But I would say... You know, it just depends who the idea starts with, really, and it just evolves from there. So you played Bloodstock last year through the Metal to the Masses. How was that whole kind of process for you, and how was the experience of playing Bloodstock? Yeah, so the the process of the competition, so um, it was fantastic. I, I mean, I went into that competition with the full with, with the with the mindset of we're going to win this thing. And that's not um, in no means a cocky way. It's like, I'm very competitive. And I think, why enter it if you don't think you're going to win it? You know? So we, we went in, we, we entered the year before and we got to the final, but then COVID hit. <laughs> yeah. So basically they chose the bands based on the scoring from the previous round. And unfortunately we didn't get to play. It was kind of um, a blessing in disguise because I was actually on holiday. I, I went to meet my partner's parents in Bulgaria at the time. So yeah, it was. It kind of worked out better for me that we didn't get to play it, <laughs> you know. Um, so we entered it again the following year, and we had such great feedback from you know the judges and from like the crowds and stuff, and some really like great memories from that. And you know, and actually winning it was was just like um, unbelievable because in my previous band, I think my my first ever band. So when I started it, when I was like eighteen, we entered it when I was like eighteen or nineteen, and we got to the final then, but, but we lost it, and it. I was like devastated you know I was so young as well and I just thought oh I'm never entering it again you know because I just couldn't take the lose you know losing kind of thing and um we decided as this band that we we would enter it you know and it was an amazing experience and you know we made a lot of good contacts and friends you know people that we wouldn't have met before and yeah actually playing Bloodstock like that was a dream of mine as well because you know I've gone I've been going to Bloodstock since I was 18 years old so i'm 35 now so i've been going for a lot of years and i've seen how the festival has grown as well so to actually get to play that festival and be a part of a lineup like it was last year was yeah it was a dream come true so um it was extremely hot though on that day we played on a sunday and it was probably the most dehydrated i've ever been at a gig um playing on stage because we were really going for it as well but you know i wouldn't change anything but it was really hot and um really grateful for all the people that stopped by and watched us as well because i think by that time of the day everyone was kind of just like oh i'm just dying of of heat you know so <laughs> we, we remember it it was horrific absolutely yeah it was horrific. wasn't it i think there was a point where people were just trying to get shelter out of the sun yeah because they just they were done so yeah since you played bloodstock has that opened other doors for you guys yes it has um i would say it's it's um it's kind of it's made people de- definitely take us more seriously because you don't just get on a, like a, a build like Bloodstock for because you know for nothing. So I think you know I'm very proud of. Well, we only had one EP at the time, so but I think you know I'm very proud of the production on that EP. And I think you know the the full intention of this band was okay. If we're going to start, it, we're going to do it right. We're going to try and come across as professional as possible, not just come across like a local band because you know we're very small. You know we're, we're very insignificant in comparison to you know all the all the big bands and stuff were very very small but i really want us to come across as you know professional and that's like in person and online you know if you look at our website or our socials and stuff i want it to come across like wow they're they're like a band that means business you know and um i think you know playing a gig like that is also just 
it's added added to that as well. So yeah, it's it's definitely um, done really well for us. Do you think that's kind of like a maturity thing now? You know, in, instead of winning it that first time, you know, when you were eighteen, would you have got to that kind of dedicated seriousness that you're at now? Yeah, I, I think first of all, looking back, like we didn't deserve to win. I think we, I think we were good for our age, but we weren't ready to play something like Bloodstock. You know, um, and I can look at that, you know, re- retrospectively. Um, but yeah, in terms of, it's definitely to do with maturity. Like in my old band, we made all the mistakes. We played all the shows. We played a show, shows on Monday nights to absolutely no one. That's a glorified band practice. We didn't think about merchandise. We didn't think about online presence. Like we did a little bit. Like one of the members was really good at the online stuff. But yeah, with that kind of experience, I've taken all of that experience and used it to kind of try our very best to make this a success. You know. And you've just got back from your first European date in Poland. Yes. How did that all come about and how was it? Oh, yeah. So I have a friend who um, he's a massive like metal fan. He's he's Polish himself, but he's lived in England for the past best part of 20 years. Really, really close friend of mine. He said it was his kind of like mission to get us to play at this venue in Poland, because for us, we think it will be a very big market for our type of music. and you know he he has a lot of contacts in that in the metal scene like basically a lot of people he's kind of like famous in the metal world you know all the kind of like local gigs and stuff like that or even like in poland it's very very common for people to travel all over the country to go to see the big bands and stuff like that and uh you know loads of people know who he is and uh he's just a really great guy and he spoke with the venue owners and you know managed to get us on this this bill and yeah, to get us over there and it did not disappoint whatsoever i was t- saying to the guys poland's like a different world like you know when when, when we play there you're going to see like how amazing it is and it, it did not disappoint it was off the charts it was you know it was lots of traveling stuff because you know usually if you were playing in europe you would be doing like a tour so you're not as doing as much one one time traveling sort of thing but it was it wasn't that bad to be fair um the the owners of the venues were great hosts. Like they had us over for for dinner. They were so welcoming. Um, and the fans afterwards were just like during the gig. I've it's the craziest crowd we've ever played to. Like <laughs> there was there were moments like there was. I'm so glad there was a barrier. There was <laughs> people like going up on the barrier and like one guy he like punched my guitar with like but in a good way like passionate. Yeah. Just like going abs and giving us like the crazy eyes and stuff like that. it was it was unbelievable and um. Yeah, our guitarist still has bang over from that uh from that gig. It's a <laughs> cuz um you know when you get getting that energy from the crowd you you can't help but get into it as well and uh and afterwards when we finished playing, you know, I walked over to the merch stand and people were just like, "Oh, can I get a photo? Can you sign this? Can you sign that?" And I'm like it was just I've, I've never had that before in my life. It's uh it was really it was really it was a lot of fun, you know. Yeah, just I, I can't wait to go back there to be honest. <laughs> So just about the Poland gig, um, James left the band. That was his last gig. It was his last gig, yeah. So so this has been on the cards for for quite a while. Um, so first of all, when we started Must Kill, he basically joined the band to help me get it started because in England, it's really hard to find a drummer. Like basically all the good drummers are taken. They're all in like 10 bands. It's really hard to, to start something up because what I found was a lot of drummers, which are worth their soul is like they don't want to start something from the ground up they, they've got the kind of um the privilege to be able to pick and choose who they join and you know so he he is like a phenomenal drummer and he was kind enough to like start start it and it was only supposed to be for for one one release so we recorded the ep and we thought okay if we re- release one ep we'll then attract you know a drummer who wants to do this full time and then the pandemic hit and you know he ended up just staying for it's, it's been the best part of five years now uh <laughs> yeah that's, that's a bit more than one release isn't it that, that, yeah exactly and you know last year he, he said well if you're going to get someone because we were originally going to get someone who um, i'm friends with to to basically session for us he says well if you're going to do that i already know the songs so i may as well just record and he's so he did that but he was like so nice and he said don't worry i'll contribute to it as well like because we were just going to split it three ways you know and for people that don't know recording and all the things that go with it is expensive you know but uh he he even like 
put in his quarter of it and he didn't have to do that um it just shows like what a great guy he is and he stuck with us until this point and with his very very busy schedule and the only reason he's not a part of the band is because he wants to pursue other things in his personal life it's so basically take a backseat from music we want to pursue it as a full-time endeavor we don't you know so he said he doesn't want to hold us back and to be honest his intentions were clear from the the, the get-go you know so um he just did us a favor for five, for five years so <laughs> um the last gig was um that was a proper send-off gig so yeah and just this evening we've just announced our new drummer so and w- which w- which we've known about for for maybe nearly two months now but we've had we've kept under wraps just so we could uh announce it after the final show um that's joe that's joe yeah correct so how hard or easy was it to to bring joe in I mean, so we've been looking for a drummer for a while, although I think because James had done us the massive favour of staying for so long, it made us very lazy and looking for someone because he was still doing the gigs for us. Yeah, you know, I'll, I'll, hold, my, I'll hold my hands. I've, I thought, not sub, well, probably just more subconsciously, subconsciously, like, yeah, well, we're playing the gigs, you know, don't need to look. And then he, he actually said, I, I, you know, I, I need to kind of stop soon because... Yeah, I've got other things that I need to be doing. So anyway, we started looking and we auditioned some people and, you know, we wanted to find like the right person. We weren't just, we weren't going to settle for anyone. Um, and also living up to James's standards as well. It was like, that's their big shoes to fill. And yeah, Daryl, uh, well, actually, so one of the bands from who won Metal to the Masses this year in Hitchin, um, Sentient, uh, the drummer, Ricky, he recommended uh, a bunch of drummers online and joe was one of those drummers thank you ricky by the way if you ever hear this so yeah the guitarist daryl just messaged him and he said yeah he'd be really interested in like auditioning he sent us a video and i was you know we were all really impressed it actually inspired me i was like wow i just want to go and start playing music and stuff and get in a room with this guy so we went in the room we organized an audition he said he was quite nervous and you know i was nervous as well and but um we all instantly clicked because i think you know the playing's one thing, but you've got to have that band. You've got to have that chemistry with each other as well. You know, especially if you're going to spend be spending a lot of time with each other, you have to get along. Yeah, <laughs> it, it definitely helps. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah, just a little bit. So, um, as soon as you stepped in the room, that guy, I was just like, yeah, he's the guy. He's the guy. And um, we auditioned him, and I, I wanted to tell him on the spot, yeah, you're in. But um, obviously, we can't do that because I wanted, I needed to find out what the other guys thought. So, yeah, it, it was unanimous, and. Um, yeah, and here he is. So, yeah, we're super happy because now we're all going to be, you know, kind of working towards the the same goal of wanting to do the, you know, to basically just progress on, take Muskill to the next level. We were chatting about drummers, weren't we, earlier? Yeah. Literally, like, 20 minutes ago? Yeah, I was saying that. We've seen a few bands who their drummers have left, and that seems to be kind of the position that seems to be vacant the most, I guess. Oh, it, re- it really is, especially in this country. I mean, I think, like I said, all the good drummers are taken or they're in a hundred bands. You know, it's yeah. <laughs> it's really hard. Like, I think if we lived in somewhere in kind of Europe, it might be easier. You know, like Poland, for example, so many amazing drummers. Like, <laughs> yeah. yeah. But like, yeah, in every country. But um, because we're a tiny little island, you know, it's uh, all the good drummers are taken. So, yeah, and and what I loved about what Joe said was he he he'd seen us before in Metal to the Masses, and he said him and his missus actually voted for us in the semi final. I think it was so that was like a a little yeah, it was a little sweetener. And he said, oh cool, you know he loves the music as well. He said that he wouldn't join something that he wasn't interested in. He couldn't just um just play it because it's because he just wants to be in a band. So that's you know a massive bonus because we want everyone to be on board and working and you know be being passionate about the project. You know. Right. It's time for the quickfire round, I believe. It is, yeah. Okay. So how many random questions is it? Eight random questions. So hopefully you've not been asked these before, but just go with whatever comes to your mind. Sure. Right. First one then is, what song do you wish you had written? Oh, God. Uh, Oh, my God. That's really hard. It's, really, it's supposed to, it's supposed to be quick fire, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Beneath the remains by Sepultura. Uh, favorite pizza topping? Uh, I'm vegetarian, so veggie veggie topping. What was the last song you listened to? 
the last song I listened to. It was earlier. Yeah. Check the Spotify. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was the Nuclear V by Hell Ripper. Excellent choice. If you could be a biscuit, what biscuit would you be? Mm. Chocolate hobnob. Oh, oh solid choice. <laughs> Yeah, it's a popular one, though. Popular, it? yeah. yeah. My my first instinct set, but I was thinking from a child was probably a bourbon, but that I don't really eat those anymore. So I ate them a lot when I was a kid. <laughs> yeah. I would eat a chocolate hobnob, you know. So. <laughs> it's the maturity again. That's right. That's right. <laughs> What's your favourite film? Oh God, I've got so many favourite films. Um, I would have to say, um. Now it's probably, and again, this this is just cha- it changes all the time. Uh, Inglorious Bastards, solid choice. Sorry, okay. can I swear on here? Sorry, I'll... you can. Yeah. You, yeah, yeah, you can say whatever you want. It does, it's absolutely fine. Yeah, okay. But then you know, seconds that would probably be something like uh, Django or maybe Scarface or Robocop. Oh, original Robocop. Yeah, there's only one Robocop. Yeah, you know, there's only one. So all the Hovens Robocop. <sighs> I. I when um when I went to the cinema to see that I wanted to walk out, but I thought I've paid I've paid for this, so I have to sit here and suffer it. But um I was very disappointed. You can't beat the original. So no, the original's a masterpiece. It is. And I think it was a proper low budget film as well. I think it n- didn't even nearly make it as a film. Like I think but yeah, it, um yeah, the director's cut as well is fantastic. <laughs> What's your pre gig ritual? So my, my ritual is like, I always need to find somewhere to practice. So if you see me at, so the kind of the venues that we play right now, um, we don't have the privilege usually of having a band room, like, cause I, I think that's a big privilege to have like a room, but like, it, uh, I'm not saying individually, but just like a bat, a room for the bands to all sit in and do whatever, whatever. Um, you'll usually see me at the side somewhere, laptop open big headphones on and I'm practicing before we go on like probably about an hour and a half before. So I'm, I'm really big on warming up practicing before getting in the zone. It helps me get in the zone. So yeah, all, all I want is a tiny, tiny little room, you know, in the backstage just so I can do that. <laughs> I'll be happy. What would be your dream tour lineup? And you can include yourself on that. So I think if we were to ever support someone like, like te- someone like Testament, if we would like to support a band like that, I would say, yeah, life complete, music complete now. I can die a happy man, you know. Um, <laughs> yeah, I would think like Testament and Exodus, that would be a real dream lineup for me. Because they're, you know, those guys are not, they're, they're not that young anymore, but they sound like, they sound as fresh as ever. They absolutely slay it. Every time I see them, like they don't sound like they're old. They, You know, that's not to be disrespectful, but they are an old, you know, they're in their, what, fif- 50s? Yeah, gotta be. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but they don't sound like it. They they sound as fresh as ever. So, yeah, testament and Exodus. So, what's been your most random tour or gig incident? Hmm. Random tour or gig incident in my in my previous. So, I can't speak for Muskill because we haven't had a chance. Like, we haven't toured yet. But in my old band of like this is more than ten years ago, we were playing in Poland actually, and one of the guys had just walked off somewhere. And next thing you know, he's having a fight with a tramp on the street who's uh, topless, drunk, and then we we all get involved, like trying to break it up and that. And it was just, yeah, that was totally random. Um, <laughs> yeah. And I think the guy dropped something and he, the other guitarist took it and it was a fine from the police, like for that guy for being drunk and disorderly. So, <laughs> so shocker. So. This guy got the yeah, yeah, exactly. But <laughs> It was it was all in Polish, so I had to ask someone I knew, like, what what is what is this? What does this mean? So, so yeah, pretty random. That's, that is pretty random. That's yeah. pretty random, yeah. Right, that was the last quick fire. So back to the normal questions. I managed to survive it then. You managed <laughs> to survive, yeah. <laughs> so we just want to talk a bit next about your artwork. So who designs that? Is it done kind of within the band or? Yeah, so it's, it's um, even if we put all of our heads together and tried for the next 20 to 100 years, we would never come close to what our artist does for us. Like so it's a guy named Dan Goldsworthy and he's done loads of, like he basically does all the big bands now. Um, 
he's really built his name up in the in the metal world and i don't know if you know who uh, ed repka is he did like um peace cells by megadeth he did like some of the death covers yeah cool. i think i think he might have done i don't know if he did rust in peace i'm not entirely sure but yeah that kind of classic thrash death kind of artwork style um he he's basically like the new ed repka but not kind of limited to that um funny enough when we recorded the first ep our producer um his name's ed he we were talking about who we we're potentially going to get to do it and he said oh there's a guy i was speaking to on some uh, forum once and it was to do with like guitar gear or something like that um he does really sick artwork and basically i looked him up sent him a message and he got back to me straight away and like most genuine cool guy you'll ever meet um you know he works with a lot of big names and he treats treats me exactly the same as he would with them um yeah and he was like really i, I just, I just kind of gave him my ideas about what, what i envisioned the artworks to look like he couldn't have like he, he just brought them to life and just made them amazing so i i just want to say for the record and i've told him this like i never want to work with anyone else i, I see it my skill is like you know as long as it's about he's he's our guy you know if if he still wants to work with us so which he said he did so i will hold him to that <laughs> yeah that that artwork is unbelievable it's like every time i kind of look at it it's like that is just yeah it's just it's just so visually stunning it's it's unbelievable it's, it's like you think like how can how can a human being create something like that yeah. and uh yeah he's he's super he's super talented like and uh he's Basically, he he told me that he wasn't taking any new clients on for like six months or more because he just can't handle the workload. Like, because that is his job now. That just you know that speaks for itself, doesn't it? So, yeah. Um, but yeah, he's he always makes the time to chat, and we've all, we've had some good chats as well. Not just about like the artwork, like we just chat about like music, etc. And um, yeah, we we haven't met in person, but you know, I'd love to meet him one day in person as well. Like, he's an awesome guy. So. Yeah, I fully intend on him doing all of our artworks in the future. So, new EP's just been released. Mm -hmm. What's the reaction been? Uh, the the reaction has been overwhelming, if I'm being honest. Like, because, like I said before, we're a very, very small band. You know, we, we it's all DIY at the moment. It's all self funded. We don't have a label backing us. We don't, you know, um, we work with Unearthed and they represent us. But you know, in terms of the the funding for everything, it's it's all done by us. So in terms of the reaction, you know, um, I wasn't sure how it was going to go, but um, as soon as like we released it, like people still buy CDs, and uh, so many people like all around the world like were buying CDs from us. Like, you know, the first hundred we got, they're all gone now. Um, I know it's like hundreds, not a lot in the big band world, but you know, for a band like us, it's a lot. To get our first hundred, that's really good going. Yeah, yeah, it's amazing, and it, and it's like it's not just in the UK; it's globally. It's in the US, like Asia, Scandinavia, Europe, some like countries. I, th I thought, really, like we've sent to like Indonesia, uh, Singapore, Japan. Yeah, like how do they? How have they heard of us? Like it seems like really random, you know? Yeah, yeah, Lo lots of lots of people from the US, and like not just like on the. It's been very like East, West Coast, and Central central as well um i really think like america will be the place for us and also in like eastern europe mm. but um yeah um it's been really overwhelming so i'm super happy about that you know it it kind of reaffirms that the intention that i had in the beginning when starting this band was we need to come across as professional like the the artwork needs to look a certain way like because i think if you look at that artwork it's not like it's a local band's kind of artwork you would think okay it's on par with like you know big bands that get their artworks produced it wouldn't look out of place next to one of their kind of cds or something like that so i think in terms of having all that kind of package it's really that's really helped us having a nice visualize it visually pleasing product that people want to have physically as well and also with the production you know i'm super proud of that as well yeah it's been great it's been great so far um yeah i think it was like what four months ago we released it was june june time so end of june yeah, yeah. We saw your set at Derby Alt Fest, which was great, and it was a really great kind of full day of thrash on the Saturday that you were part of. How was it from your perspective? Oh, yeah. So um, it was fantastic. So we played at, I think it was 3.45, which in terms of a day fest, it's, it's an early slot. And, you know, I've played enough 
day fests in the past where it's it's hit or miss it depends because sometimes you know, i i basically assumed people would be there for to watch you know in human nature onwards and that's no disrespect to the other bands that played before and like us because we played before them as well um i was so pleasantly surprised when i saw the amount of people that were in the room watching us um it was it was great and um yeah we st- we stayed afterwards as well right to the end because you know i'm a big gamma bomb gamma bomb fan and also with like hell ripper like that was really good to like be on the same bill as them interestingly with hell ripper my polish friend who who actually got us our gig in poland he told me a few years ago he said there's this band that i know about um that i've just bought loads of merch from they're called hell ripper it's basically one guy records everything himself etc and i never like bothered to give him a chance and he had like so much merch from hell ripper <laughs> and um he has like so many cds as well anyway um and i saw hell ripper support warbringer earlier this year in london and i wasn't convinced at the beginning i think because the, the sound wasn't the best i thought okay well, derby old fest this will, you know I, I wonder what it's going to be like and the sound was like so much better this time and like they they just like tore the stage apart like and basically i've become a bit obsessed with hell ripper since that <laughs> <laughs> so i'm a little bit late to the party because they are kind of blowing up right now but um yeah i'm i'm really into them right now so but yeah as a, as a whole day it was i thought it was a week it was a whole weekend wasn't it but yeah we we started wednesday oh did you yeah yeah <laughs> wow i was just <laughs> i think if i if i wasn't like that big of a fan of of gamma bomb i probably would have like gone because i, I was just like tired you know because because we played and then we were just hanging around i thought oh my god i'm just tired but then you know seeing bands like uh hell ripper and like gamma bomb that that was it was worth it so um so yeah it was it was fantastic it was really great to, it was really great to be a part of it yeah it, it was a great set oh thank you like the crowd as well you could see that people weren't just there for the headliners they they wanted to support every band yeah 100 100 percent, and um yeah just couldn't believe like how many people were actually in the room which is really nice like because the hairy dog is it's an awesome venue and it's it's one of those venues that if you've got five or ten people in there it looks so empty yeah you know <laughs> so you need a, a certain amount of people in there for it to look re- at least respectable so yeah there, there was definitely more than a respectable amount of number of people in there <laughs> as you would have seen but yeah how did you guys find it because um being there since like wednesday like that's every- yeah it, it was incredible when I think it was, yeah, so it was Wednesday, Thursday night, Friday night. Friday night, yeah. All day Saturday, all day Sunday. All day Saturday, all day Sunday, yeah. Oh, God. Well, respect. <laughs> yeah, we were flagging a bit by Saturday, but obviously with all the great music there was on Saturday, it really picked us up, didn't it? Yeah. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then Sunday was Sunday was kind of like a chilled out day. Mm-hmm. And the, the bands that were on kind of like reflected that sort of, um, yeah, that sort of day. Uh, but yeah, it, it was a lot of fun. A lot of fun. Yeah, that's um, yeah, big respect because that's the five days. That's what it's it's becoming the norm now, isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> <I think. pretty> <laughs> <much>. <laughs> because you know, like even go to festivals, like you know, if I go on Thursday or Friday and you go back Sunday night or Monday, you're just like by Sunday, if you've been standing up all day, even just going to a gig, you know, if you think I've been standing up for the last four hours, I'm ready to go home now and sit down and go to sleep. Like that's the maturity kicking in, yeah. I guess. <laughs> yeah. I'm I'm a lot older than you, but we we blasted through some festivals this year. <laughs> but yeah, this year's took its <laughs> toll. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just oh, when when you're in your early twenties or whatever, you I was going in the mosh pits, crowd serving, you know, doing everything and anything, and and now it's just like just find me a comfortable chair, please. Yeah, you know, and I'll stand for the bands that I want, I want to watch. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm I'm fully behind that. Yeah, <laughs> I'm. I'm I've, I've started drifting closer towards the back as like I'm getting older, you know. <laughs> it's just I don't want to get crushed anymore. That's it. Yeah, I, you don't you don't want to kind of get up the next morning just aching, covered in bruises, just going ah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> it was funny uh, earlier this year. So we went to see Lamb of God, Creator and Silosis at uh, Wembley, and uh, the guitarist Daryl in the band. You know, he, he's pretty reserved. Um, but when the Creator played a certain song, uh, when they played Hordes of Chaos, he literally just went he just barged through and like just went to the front into like the mosh pit like i've never seen that before like from him he's like he just didn't care <laughs> it, i think he just wanted to go and like slay someone you know just <laughs> it was his time yeah it was his time yeah so and which is amazing like you know that's the, the effect the music has on people you know 
I'll do it maybe once a year or once every couple of years. I'll go and do that. Yeah. But, you know. <laughs> I don't think I, I don't think I've really been at a front somewhere busy since I think Rob Zombie download. Yeah, probably. Oh really? And I can only walk the next day. Yeah, that must have hurt. <laughs> that was that was painful. Because um, the first download I ever went to was like, what was it? Two th- I think it was two thousand five or six. It was when System of a Down played on the Sunday, and yeah, System of a Down on the Sunday and Slipknot slayer anyway i stayed on the whole i stayed on the barrier the whole day and i got crushed i don't even remember if i like actually peed at all well i didn't eat i didn't drink anything i just stayed on there for like i think it was 14 or 16 hours like i don't know how i did that because i just wanted to see <laughs> system of a down and slipknot at the front you know but now i'm just like now you're all right i'll watch from the back it's fine yeah better, better view more space sounds just as good <laughs> yeah 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 exactly yeah, it was the, when they had the last Oz, Ozfest. Well, I know they did one a few years later, but Black Sabbath uh, had played on the Saturday. That was, that was that 03? I can't remember. I think it, I think it was 2005 mm. or four, four or five. It wasn't it, four, yeah, four was, four was download. We were at that one. Yeah, that was my yeah, I think they did, they did download Friday and it was like Ozfest Saturday and then download Sunday. I wonder if that was five then. It was five or six, I think. Yeah. Yeah, I think it was five. Yeah, it was the first time that Trivium ever played in the UK, I think. And that's when they kind of blew up after that as well. Yeah, they, they just exploded. <laughs> yeah. And I've been going to watch them ever since then. So <laughs> never I'd I'd never heard of them at that point either. So that was I was it's really cool to say that I was like there to see that, you know. Yeah. You know, uh, Trivium as a band, like I've loved them since since then. But like as a band, like I'd probably the most professional band ever. Like the way they carry themselves on the stage, the way they operate, like for me as a musician, that's that's inspiring in itself, not just the music, but how how they are as a band as well. They definitely they definitely lead by example, you know. That's why they've been around for so long and they're still getting bigger and bigger and bigger. So Yeah, they've definitely got staying power. Definitely. So I think one year I I didn't go to Bloodstock, they headlined on Friday. I don't know if you guys went to that one, but I think they were received like really well because I wasn't sure how they were Yeah, they would do it like Bloodstock. Bloodstock do throw some kind of curveballs in there with, with their selection. Yeah, I cheated on Bloodstock that year. I went to Brutal Assault. But... Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so you've got you guys have got your next gig at the Devin Camden, uh, 24. That's right, yes, next Friday. So are you planning any more dates this year or are you gonna tour the EP next year? So we've we're we're trying to book so we've got two dates left this year. So we've got yeah, the twenty fourth next week, and then we're playing a club eighty five in Hitchin on the eighth of December. Now we've got a couple of dates we're trying to fill in that time. Whether that's going to be realistic or not, um, you know, that's to be determined and probably unlikely. But uh, the full intention is to play as many shows next year as possible, anywhere and everywhere. So to really, you know, get the band out there and people, you know, get as visible to people that who don't know who we are. So, yeah, whilst uh, in that process, we'll be writing for our next release as well. Fantastic. Cool. Well, thank you very much for joining us, Dan. It's been an absolute pleasure talking to you. Likewise, thank you very much for having me. And good luck with the uh, dates and, of course, the uh, new EP. Thank you so much, and thank you for having me. Wonderful, thank you. Well, we hope you enjoyed listening to that chat with Dan. If you're not familiar with Must Kill, then do go check them out. They've got two EPs out that you can go and listen to. And if you want to keep up with them on their socials, if you just give Must Kill Band a search, you should find them through that. As always, thank you very much for listening. If you're not following us already on our socials, they are ready to mosh cast on Instagram, threads and X and ready to mosh on Facebook, YouTube and TikTok. So give us a follow on there and see what we're up to in between episodes. If you have enjoyed what you've been listening to, do please give us a five star rating and a review because that would be very much appreciated. And we'll be back soon with another episode for you. Make it stop, Merg.